Hey YouTube, how you're going? Um, just going to do another video today. Um, this time I'm going to be doing it on my wetsuits that I'm wearing at the World's Toughest Mudder. I will be doing a more in-depth uh, video on the gear and equipment I'm taking, but uh, for today I just thought I'd go through my wetsuits, uh, let you know what I'm taking, and um, hopefully that way you can kind of share your comments and thoughts and let me know what you're doing, and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll just uh, flip the camera around and show you what I got. Okay guys, well here are my wetsuits. The one, uh, the all black one there is a 3-2. That's kind of my backup wetsuit if you like. And the one with the red shoulders, that's a 4-3. Uh, they're both top of the line suits. I believe they're the Psycho Freaks. Um, so retailing in Australia at well over $500 a piece. Uh, the reason why I decided to go for two wetsuits rather than the one, well it did come down to kind of economics to be honest I was offered a really good deal on both of these suits from a mate who works in the industry and was able to help us out um, if I wasn't able to get them at that price I probably just would have had to have stuck with one just for the budget uh, in terms of the suits as I said they're 3 2 and a 4 3 now I know on the world's toughest mudder website they recommend that people run in a 6 mil suit and that for uh, last year, a lot of people ended up wearing two suits towards the finish. Now, I believe the people who ended up wearing two suits started out the course uh, just in like compression gear without a wetsuit and tried to just kind of take the wetsuit on and off at the water obstacles. And obviously that didn't work out for them. So I think why they ended up wearing two, uh, well, this is just my theory, is that they ended up wearing two wetsuits uh, because they got too cold with to begin with and then were kind of trying to overcompensate whereas if they'd worn a wetsuit throughout their core would have stayed warm and they probably would have got away with just wearing that single wetsuit uh, instead of having to double up and have like 10 millimeters or more of neoprene uh, against their body which would obviously limit mobility quite a bit um, we also, I also know from what I've read on the internet that Pac, the winner last year, ran in a 3-2. Uh, he did, however, recommend running in something thicker uh, this year. And Jason, another guy who stayed out on the course the entire 24 hours, he ran in a 3-2 as well. And he's doing so again um, at this year's event. So, kind of weighing all that up in my mind, I decided to go, I guess, for a little bit of a middle ground and get the 4-3 uh, as my main suit. The 3-2 is hopefully, um, you know, for the earlier part in the day, if it is a little bit warmer, that way I've got a little bit more flexibility and I can get into a kind of warmer, dry suit, uh, drier suit, um, you know, that's stashed away in my tent, just as a bit of a, a morale boost, I guess, uh, come night time. So, uh, the only other thing really to say is obviously, uh, why did I go with the surf suit? I know a lot of people... Um, have decided to go with like a diving suit they typically do tend to be thicker the diving suits so that's probably the reason why some people have gone that route uh, I like the surf suits because they do have a little bit more flexibility and everything like that because uh, they are designed to be moving around when you're paddling and whatnot and also out of the <coughs> all the shops I spoke to uh, they definitely said that O'Neill and Rip Curl uh, were the best surf suits to get basically they said that's their core business and they make wetsuits to be good compared to some other surf brand companies that like selling t-shirts and board shorts and just make the wetsuit on the side. So um, I'll just flip this one around to show you <coughs> that I decided to go with the back zip. Um, from what I've read, the front zips do tend to be a little bit warmer and you can also get a little bit more flexibility across the shoulders if you have that front zip. Uh, however, as I said, I had a mate in the industry who was able to offer me a good price. So if I didn't go for the back zip, I, I would have had to have paid two to three times the price to get these suits. Uh, this, the back zip, however, on the O'Neill suits is a little bit different. It doesn't go straight onto your back. It's got... Um, an extra layer of neoprene between the zip and your back so it does kind of keep the water sh directly off your back if it seeps through the zips which is pretty handy to have it's also got uh, just another little bit of neoprene that goes over your head and helps kind of seal around your neck 
As I said, they're top of the line suits and both of them have this firewall technology, which is super warm. Um, I've worn both suits out running and let me tell you, you just sweat like crazy. Uh, I mean, I am testing it in Sydney here, um, in Sydney, Australia, so the temperature even at night has been about 20 degrees, but it's just super hot, man. Ridiculous. I even got in a freezing cold shower just to see if I could get cold, and besides my feet that were getting wet, um, yeah, I was warm as. So that's kind of put me in two minds about what suit to start with, and I am leaning towards starting with the 3-2, just because I know how kind of warm the 4-3 is. And as I said, I think it would be good to be able to start in the 3-2, do maybe two quicker laps, and then when you need a bit of a morale boost, you can take it off. You can put on fresh um, compression gear underneath, get in the new uh, wetsuit that's obviously been kept dry in your tent and head out there at night uh, where you're going to be slower anyway. So... You know, if the 4.3 is a little bit more restrictive, it's not going to be as big a deal. Uh, the 3.2 here, it's got the same kind of setup. Um, again, it's a back zip uh, wetsuit with the... Sorry, guys. It's a bit hard to unzip things with one hand when you're trying to undo the Velcro too. It's got this um, guard here as well at the back, extra layer neoprene the firewall. As I said, they're both top of the line suits, so they're fully glued, binded, taped, all that jazz on the inside as well. And um, yeah, I mean, the main thing is that they're super warm. So that's the, that's the wetsuits there, guys. Um, I'll just pause the video and show you my hood as well. Okay, guys, this is the hood that I got. It's um, pretty toasty inside as well. As you can see, it's seven mil hood. Uh, well, more correctly, it's a five or seven five. Um, it's pretty much seven mil all through the head, and then this neck section here is a little bit thinner, um, where it goes down to five mil. It's a company called Waterproof, uh, which made it very hard to find on Google because when you type in waterproof uh, hood or neoprene hood, it comes up with a whole heap of other stuff and makes it quite difficult to actually compare prices and that kind of thing but um, it seems to be a really good brand it wasn't cheap uh, to say the least uh, but it, it it's super thick and it keeps you warm so that's pretty cool there I've also got a pair of these gloves um, last year a lot of people including pack ran in three mil gloves and said that they wish they had a little bit thicker pair so they're five mil I've got this like zip here at the back uh, on the top of the hand, sorry, to help you get in and out, which might be handy come middle of the night when your hands are freezing cold and you're finding it hard to get out of stuff. And then I've also got some O'Neill uh, gloves there, three mil. They are a little bit tight on me, um, but they were dirt cheap, again, from my mate in the industry. So, look, I, I thought I'd just get them as a backup pair. Five mil pair are the main ones. 3 mil probably wear those for the first lap, just see how we go, and uh, that hood, don't think I'll be wearing that at the start, but if it is super cold, cold I will probably try and put that on lap 2 or 3 maybe, um, going to try and get a Under Armour kind of compression hood type thing as well, just for maybe the, the first lap or two, just so I have something to protect my uh, head and keep help retain some heat. So that's an overview, guys, of all the wetsuit gear. I uh, hope you found it useful. And, uh, yeah, let us know what you're wearing to World's Toughest Mudder. Comment below. Subscribe if you want more videos like this. And uh, look forward to seeing you at the event and keeping all of you who aren't going updated via YouTube. Thanks very much.